Flat rate VAT is quite similar to standard rate VAT. However, it was introduced in 2002 as a way of providing smaller businesses with a simpler method of calculating their VAT bill. It differs from standard rate VAT in the sense that it tends to have lower rates of VAT and less paperwork, which sounds great, but there's a slight downfall to it. The VAT paid on goods can't be claimed back or offset against your VAT bill, essentially meaning if you're on the flat rate scheme, then you only pay VAT and can't claim any back whether or not you've paid VAT on your purchases. There is just one slight exception to this, and that's if you are a flat rate VAT registered business, then you can claim back VAT on one purchase of capital goods, which cost more than £2,000. And we'll go through the details later on in the video. When your flat rate VAT is calculated, you're also expected to charge your customers VAT as you would do on the standard rate scheme, but you would only pay the tax authorities the proportion of the flat rate. So you could actually end up making more money being on the scheme in comparison to not being on the scheme. But as discussed a minute ago, if you're in a competitive industry, then you might struggle to gain market share with increased prices. So you might decide to pay the flat rate VAT out of your existing sales prices without increasing your prices by 20% or whatever the, the necessary rate is. If this doesn't quite make sense now, then keep watching and we'll cover some examples throughout the video. Let's take Amazon as an example. If you're selling something on Amazon, it's likely to be priced in comparison to your competition. For example, you're selling a pair of socks and all the socks on Amazon are priced around five pounds. Then you probably also set yours to that price, even though you know that someone can buy a pair of socks in Primark for two quid. So if you then register for VAT and hike your price up by 20%, you're now quite a bit over the average price and most online shoppers actually prioritize price over reviews. If you are selling on Amazon or any other platform which prioritizes product ranking by sales volume and price, then this would actually also start causing a whole load of other issues on those platforms, such as um, rankings and stuff like that, but we won't get into that now. So if that is your situation, then in order to keep your business operating, you can actually absorb the 20% VAT, assuming that you're selling standard rate products. If you're thinking about doing this, then just make sure to do the right calculations. And I say that because if you're selling products which have quite a small margin, then absorbing 20% VAT out of your current sales price could end up causing you to pay more VAT than you're making in profit and end up making a loss. So you should only be making that sort of decision if you know that you'd still be making a profit. So how does flat rate VAT work? It's quite similar to standard VAT in the sense that you add value onto the item of your goods and then pay it to the tax authorities. It differs when it comes to thresholds, tax rates, and how you calculate the VAT owed, which we'll be looking at throughout the video. But before we do that, let's briefly take a look at the differences. When you're on the flat rate scheme, you or your accountant will choose the most suitable flat rate for your business by manually going through the flat rate list on the gov.uk website, which I'll share a link for in the video's bio. Once you've chosen the most suitable category for your business, for example, retail not listed anywhere else, which is 7.5%, you would then pay 7.5% of your total turnover, including the 20% VAT, which you charge your customers. Note that when you're on the flat rate scheme, you're still expected to charge your customers the necessary rate of VAT. So for instance, if you're selling a standard rated item, you'd be, you'd be expected to charge them an, an additional 20%, not required, just expected. And hence the flat rate VAT you pay, in our case, 7.5% would be charged on the output VAT too, which is the amount of VAT you charge your customers. When you're on the flat rate scheme, you or your accountant will choose the most suitable flat rate for your business by manually going through the flat rate list on the gov.uk website, which I'll share a link for in the video's bio. Once you've chosen the most suitable category for your business, for example, retail not listed anywhere else, which is 7.5%, 
you would then pay 7.5% of your total turnover, including the 20% VAT you charge your customers. And I say 20% as an example, assuming that you're selling standard rated goods. Note that when you're on the flat rate scheme, you're still expected to charge your customers that additional VAT. And hence, the flat rate VAT you pay in our case would be, say, 7.5% would be charged on the output VAT2, which is the amount of VAT you charge your customers. Let's take a look at some flat rate VAT examples, assuming the flat rate VAT for our business is 7.5%. So I'm gonna use two terms here, which are conventional and unconventional methods. By conventional, I mean a business which charges its customers the additional rate of VAT, say 20% for standard rated goods. And for unconventional, I mean a business which absorbs that VAT because they want to stay competitive. Example number one, let's say your business last year had costs of £30,000 plus VAT and your turnover was £100,000 plus VAT. And that was before you were registered for any type of VAT scheme. You'd now like to estimate how much VAT you'd pay on the flat rate scheme next year, assuming your sales volume would stay the same. Then you'd multiply 100,000 by 1.2 to count for the additional 20% you've charged your customers. And that's assuming you're selling standard rated goods. Of course, if you're selling reduced rated goods, then you charge them 5%, so you'd multiply 100 by 1.05. So in our example, you charge your customers 120,000 pounds, 100,000 times 1.2. You would then multiply 120,000 by your flat rate, which is 7.5%, and that comes to 9,000 pounds. So your flat rate bill would be 9,000 pounds over the course of a year since we're looking at annual turnover here. Your estimated net profit would be £120,000 minus £9,000 minus £36,000, which is a net profit of £75,000. And it was 36 because our costs were £30,000 plus VAT. When you're on the flat rate scheme, as we said earlier, you can't claim back the VAT you paid on goods. So it would be £30,000 times 1.2 which is 36. Example number two is the unconventional method, which is absorbing the VAT yourself as a business. In other words, not charging customers an additional 20%. Last year, your costs were the same as the previous example, so 30,000 pounds plus VAT, and your turnover was 100,000 pounds. You'd then like to estimate how much VAT you pay on the flat rate scheme next year, assuming your sales volume will stay the same. So you'd simply multiply your turnover of £100,000 by your flat rate, since you haven't charged the customers that extra 20%. Your estimated net profit is now £100,000 minus 7500 minus £36,000. So your estimated net profit is £56,500. So if we're comparing the two calculations, then in theory, you'd make more profit on the conventional method, which isn't a surprise since we've charged our customers the additional VAT. In our case, it was 20%. However, in a real life example, and depending on your industry, then you might actually see a decrease in revenue after you've increased your prices. There's no way of determining the drop without doing some tests, but in general, I'd assume products being sold online will see a drop in revenue and products and services offline or in brick and mortar shops won't be affected as much after increasing their prices. And I say that because when a customer is buying something online, they can instantly compare prices of hundreds of products and different sellers and hence why you might see a drop. Whereas if you're running a shop such as a beauty shop, a restaurant, even a builder's merchant and so on, then Foothold will have to walk from shop to shop to compare prices, which isn't necessarily going to happen, particularly comparing it to online. So here's my top tip. If you're unsure whether your revenue will decrease following an increase in prices, then if you can afford to, I would suggest temporarily increasing your prices by 20% 
before you've registered for VAT for a short period of time, say between a week and a month during a period which isn't seasonal so you can get reliable data. Then use the new sales data to estimate your annual profit and comparing the two scenarios. So the conventional method and unconventional method. A handful of you might even be surprised and see an increase in revenue. If this happens, then this is actually an indication that your prices were too low in the first place. Some customers associate high prices with better quality products and some of you will actually find that increasing your prices will also increase your sales. There's only one way to find out, so get tested. So on the flat rate scheme, there's one lower threshold and two upper thresholds. Let's take a look at what they are. The lower threshold is the exact same as a standard VAT scheme, and that's £85,000, which means once you've hit £85,000 turnover, taxable turnover, you have to either get registered for standard VAT or flat rate VAT. The first upper threshold is the limit which allows you to join the scheme, and that's £150,000. This means you can only join the scheme if your taxable turnover is less than £150,000 or at least forecasted to be less than in the next year. So if your turnover is currently £130,000 but you've just opened up two other shops and you're forecasting your turnover next year to be £190,000 then you won't be able to join the scheme. The second upper limit determines when you need to leave the scheme by law, and that's £230,000. So once your business has hit £230,000 in taxable turnover, you have to register for standard VAT. Prepare to join either scheme before you exceed the low threshold of £85,000, and that's because tax authorities will ask you to backdate any VAT owed if you delay joining the scheme. So you can be hit with a hefty bill if you turn a blind eye to this. Calculate your estimated net profit margin. This is honestly one of the most useful ratios or calculations I have done in business. Your estimated net profit margin is your net profit divided by revenue. And you can do this before you've even set up your business. Calculating your net profit margin before you register for VAT and the estimated net profit margin for the two VAT schemes will allow you to compare each scenario and decide whether to even exceed the threshold in the first place. Because you, you can, you're, you're well within your right to limit the amount of sales you're making in your business so you can stay below the VAT threshold and carry on business as normal as long as you don't exceed that threshold. Let's take a look at an example. So we've had a look at the rates of standard VAT and now we're gonna look at the rates when you run the flat rate VAT scheme. So there's only one flat rate which is applicable to your business when you're registering for flat rate VAT, which has both pros and cons, right? Since only one rate is, is applied to um, your business to calculate your VAT, you don't need to keep as many records and the calculations are much simpler. Hence, you'll end up saving time and sometimes money on an accountant too. However, since that rate is applied to all of your sales, whether or not the products you were selling were exempt from VAT, then sometimes you can end up paying more VAT on items that you would have otherwise not paid VAT on if you're on the standard VAT scheme, such as zero rated items. So when you're deciding between two schemes, you really need to do some calculations, estimate the VAT you'd be paying on both cases by looking at your specific products, find their VAT rates and do the calculations. To find out what flat rate you pay on the flat rate scheme, you need to use your business type by having a look at the list on the gov.uk website. And as mentioned before, I'll, I'll leave a link to that page on the video's bio. The flat rate scheme was actually being abused when it first came about by businesses with very low costs and high income. So in 2017, there was a slight change to the scheme by introducing something called a limited cost business rate. This is the only case where your flat rate is not determined by your business type, but instead your turnover. 
This won't apply to a lot of you. This rate only applies to you if you're considered a limited cost business and you're considered a limited cost business if your goods cost less than either 2% of your annual turnover or £1,000 a year. If your costs are more than 2%, then you use the £1,000 a year value. If this applies to you, then your flat rate will be 16.5%. That's the flat rate you apply to all of your turnover. If you're considered a limited cost business, to prevent businesses from incorporating everyday purchases to increase their costs above the 2% threshold, the following items must be excluded when working out whether or not your business is deemed to be a limited cost one. So you have to exclude this list. It's any services such as accounting or advertising, food, travel and accommodation, rent, internet, phone bills, training and memberships, and last but not least, capital items, for example, office equipment, laptops, mobile phones, and tablets. You have to exclude those out of your costs when you're deciding if you're a limited cost business. Most businesses that have suppliers that are buying goods and selling them on won't be limited cost businesses. As a heads up guys, everything throughout this video applies regardless of the type of business you operate, whether you're self-employed or running a limited company. And for those of you who are watching this video who haven't yet set up a business and would like to set up a limited company in particular, then make sure you take a look at my step-by-step -step video on how to set up a limited company, including everything you need to know before doing so, which should pop up any moment now. Your flat rate turnover is all of the supplies your business makes, all of the sales, including VAT. So this is standard rated items, zero rated items, reduced rated items, and VAT exempt items. You will pay VAT on all of those items. So earlier on in the video, I mentioned that there was one exception to claiming back VAT on the flat rate scheme. You can only claim back VAT on capital goods worth over £2,000 and you can only do it once. Once sold, the proportion of standard VAT needs to be paid back. For example, a business on the scheme buys a delivery van for £5,000 plus £1,000 worth of VAT and it's not used for anything else. As the van is capital expenditure goods, VAT can be reclaimed. So you claim back that £1,000 you spent. When the business later sells or part exchanges the van for say £2,000, it must account for the VAT on this amount of 20%, not at the flat rate. It's also important to get this right, because if you include items that are not part of the turnover, you end up paying too much VAT. And if you leave them out, you'll pay too little VAT and could be assessed and have to pay penalty with interest. The pros of using flat rate VAT are, if your business has less expenses and a low input VAT, you can actually make more money from the flat rate scheme in comparison to not being registered for, v for any VAT scheme. Next, if you run a smaller business, then the pressure's off you to keep in-depth records of VAT charges. Instead, you just pay a fixed rate on all of your, on all of your turnover. This will take less hours out of your day and allow you to spend more time on actually focusing on the business and, and building it. So the truth is flat rate VAT was made for smaller businesses and, and it cannot be doubted that it does live up to its purpose. However, there are a couple of negatives and here they are. If your firm is registered for the flat rate scheme, then you can't reclaim any input tax on goods or services that you've purchased in expenses. This might be great if you don't have many expenses, but if you do, it could be a big financial burden. Finally, if your business sells zero rated or VAT exempt goods, then they won't really be zero rated or VAT exempt anymore for you. This is because you still have to pay your flat rate on all turnover. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I certainly enjoyed making it. Stay tuned for more videos. And until next time, guys, take it easy.